In this video, I'll be going over frame rate independence and how you implement it. The basic idea behind frame rate independence is that you want your game to continue going at the normal in-game speed, even if the frame rate drops. Normally, if you don't have frame rate independence, your game will slow down if a frame rate drops, and if the player is moving, they'll start moving slower and stuff like that. The way you fix this is by finding how much time has passed since the last frame and using that amount to modify all movement and stuff like that. That amount is called delta time. Uh, delta is a symbol that means difference, basically. So it's time passed, basically. And usually people like to represent it as dt for delta time. So I'm going to set up something right here to get the time passed. I'll be using the time library here because using time.time .time gives me the current epoch time. Epoch is just how many seconds have passed since a certain time. It's, I, I think it was 1970s, I forgot. But the main thing to remember is that one time, well, one unit of time in epoch is one second. So I'm setting up this last time variable as time.time. .time. And then I can get how much time has passed since the last time I used this line by just doing dt equals time.time .time minus last time. And then I'm going to set up that last time variable again. So every frame, it checks how much time has passed since I last set the last time to time.time. .time. And since I'm taking the current time, subtracting it from that last time, it's just how many seconds have passed. So DT is currently in seconds. But if you've been working without frame rate independence for a while, you're probably used to the scale where things will move 60 pixels in a second if you do plus equals one. So to keep that scale, typically what I do is I do DT times equals 60. So that one second passing equals 60 units for DT. So it's like working at 60 frames per second. So I can multiply by dt here. So most of the time, since if we're going at 60 frames per second, dt after this line should be about 1 60th. And then I multiply it right here and you get one. However, if you're not running at 60 frames per second and it slows down, dt will increase. So if I'm moving three pixels per frame times dt, it should keep the movement constant in our time. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, I pressed E and it just keeps going at the same speed. That movement is clearly choppy though, and that's just how low frame rates work. Everything gets choppy. Implementing frame rate independence in a game that's not already frame rate independent can be a little bit difficult sometimes because you have to go through every single thing where you're modifying something that's based on time and then you have to multiply that by dt. If you have it set up like this, you, you can just multiply by dt as is. Or if you want to work with the raw DT where it's in seconds, you can do that too. But the scale's a bit different. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Twitter. If you have any questions, you can go to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions there. If you're having any issues with the code, I recommend downloading the code from the description. That fixes most of the issues I see in the comments. Anyways, I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.